Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the special weekend edition of Markets Around the World. Today, we'll be covering stocks, commodities, cryptocurrencies, macro lead indicators, and the hottest charts. Let's dive right in. The strongest stocks that have propelled us to all-time highs are now starting to falter ahead of earnings. Tesla and Intel, in particular, are not performing well. This downturn is affecting the best sector in the market, semiconductors, which is showing significant dark pool activity. We'll be discussing this in detail today. Additionally, we're observing island reversals off the take profit targets. And of course, there's something we've discussed extensively, an oil breakout that has finally occurred. The first target has been reached. However, if it breaks through this zone, how severe will it be for the markets? Let's delve into that today. Oil futures popped higher Sunday evening after a drone attack that killed three U.S. service members in northern Jordan, blamed by the White House on Iran-backed militants, marked a major escalation of tensions in the Middle East. The biggest question going into the Federal Reserve's policy meeting next week is what sort of smoke signals Fed Chair Jerome Powell will send about the possibility of an interest rate cut at the central bank's next meeting in March. Fed officials are not expected to make any changes to rates at the Jan 3031 meeting, but will use the discussion to get their ducks in a row for future monetary easing, economists said. Fed watchers agree that Powell will leave the door open for a move as soon as March, but officials won't decide one way or the other, because that meeting is two months away. Right now, Markets are pricing in a roughly 50-50 chance of a cut in March. Stock market investors may take their cues from a series of important events in the week ahead, including the Federal Reserve's monetary policy meeting, a closely watched December employment report, and an onslaught of earnings from mega-cap technology names, which all promise insight into the state of the economy and interest rate outlook. U.S. stocks got a boost over the past week from encouraging data which showed the inflationary pressures continued to moderate in December, the latest sign that price increases are slowing down significantly amid a strong economic growth to conclude 2023. The benchmark S&P 500 index SPX Thursday closed at a record high for five straight trading days, the longest streak of its kind since November 2021. The index finished slightly lower on Friday, but clinched weekly gains of 1.1% while the Nasdaq Composite Comp advanced 1%, and the Blue Chip Dow Jones Industrial Average DJIA gained 0.7% for the week, according to Dow Jones market data. 1. The U.S. economy grew at an annual rate of 3.3% in the fourth quarter, blowing past expectations for an increase of 2.0%. That's down from growth of 4.9% in the preceding quarter. 2. Real consumer spending rose 2.8% YY during the quarter, after increasing 3.1% in Q3-3. The GDP price index ticked up 1.5%, the lowest annual increase since Q2 2020. 4. Core PCE prices rose 2.0%, matching expectations, and holding near the lowest levels since Q3 2021. K takeaway. Despite fears over a looming downturn, the U.S. economy continues to grow at an above-average pace as consumer spending remains resilient. With that being said, some pockets of disinflation are starting to appear in the economy. What does the Fed do now? Final S&P 500 stocks weekly heat map. Top gainers Netflix plus 18.1%. American Express plus 10%. IBM plus 9.3%. Exxon Mobil plus 6.2%. Alphabet Inc. 3.9%. Meta Platforms plus 2.8%. NVIDIA plus 2.6%. Amazon plus 2.4%. Microsoft plus 1.3%. Apple plus 0.4%. Top losers, Tesla, 13.6%. Intel, 9.3%. PayPal Holdings, 6.1%, Boeing, 4.4%. Now let's take a look at the most anticipated earnings for this week. Pay close attention as we highlight one particularly crucial report. If you find it helpful, feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot. This chart is fascinating. Highly speculative periods are characterized by investors trying to find novel reasons to explain the uniqueness of the current situation frequently attributing the existing bubble to emerging technological advancements as a justification for frothy valuations. Notice, that is not to say that these new advancements won't be pivotal for the economy in creating new opportunities. However, if you ask me, these unrealistic expectations have gone beyond reasonable bounds. There has been a remarkable performance difference within the realm of the so-called growth stocks. Microcaps have already fallen by 47% from their peak, 
while large caps continue to reach new highs. Despite seeming ordinary, a narrowing market leadership often indicates that we're nearing the peak of the business cycle. Make your own judgments, but personally, I wouldn't want to be invested in the white line on this chart with such inflated valuations. NVIDIA's current market behavior bears resemblance to Cisco during the final phase of the dot-com bubble. It's worth noting similarities in trends, valuations, and other key indicators. Let's explore this comparison further to gain insights into potential implications for NVIDIA's future performance. Let's delve into some chart analysis, starting with the 4-hour chart of SPY. If the bulls successfully breach the 490 mark and maintain support above it, the bullish trend is likely to persist. On the flip side, if the price breaks below last week's low at 485, it could be an opportunity to consider shorting the market. However, exercise caution, as this week is packed with events and market volatility may resurface. Now let's shift our focus to the four-hour chart of QQQ. I'm leaning towards a more bearish outlook for QQQ compared to SPY, given its displayed weakness last week. I have identified downside targets at 413 or 408, However, it's crucial to consider the upcoming earnings reports as positive outcomes could potentially drive Kukaku higher. Keep a close eye on the earnings results to gauge the next moves in the market. I'm curious about your thoughts on NVIDIA. Do you believe it has reached its peak, or is there still more upside potential? Share your opinions in the comments below. In my view, I see a potential upside target around $700. What are your predictions? Moving on to the weekly chart of Tesla. It's noteworthy that we're witnessing the fifth consecutive week of red candles. This could indicate a potential bottom, especially if the price hits the golden pocket. Keep a close watch, as this could be a critical juncture, and we'd ideally want to see some buying activity if the golden pocket is reached. Turning our attention to the oil chart, a significant potential upside could be in play if the price manages to surpass the $80 mark. Keep an eye on developments, especially potential news from the Middle East, as geopolitical factors in the region have the potential to drive oil prices higher. Now let's examine the four-hour chart of gold. Despite being within a range, there's anticipation that the upcoming non-farm payroll, NFP news this week, might be the catalyst to break the current wedge pattern. Stay tuned, as this event could finally lead to a significant move in gold prices. Shifting our focus to the four-hour chart of Bitcoin, it's still within the realm of distribution. However, my outlook for Bitcoin is more bullish this week, and there's a potential to revisit the 45K level. Keep an eye on the charts for possible upward movements in BTC. All right, let's recap the key economic events lined up for this week in the United States. We'll be closely monitoring these indicators as they play a crucial role in shaping market sentiment. On Tuesday, Keep an eye on the Consumer Confidence and Jolt's job openings reports, offering valuable insights into the health of the economy. Moving ahead to Wednesday, mark your calendars for two significant events, the ADP non-farm payrolls, a precursor to the official employment data, and the eagerly awaited Fed FOMC rate decision, where the Federal Reserve will reveal its stance on interest rates. Thursday brings us the Jobless Claims and ISM Manufacturing PMI providing glimpses into the labor market and the manufacturing sector's performance. Finally, on Friday, the spotlight is on the non-farm payrolls, unemployment rate, average hourly earnings, and consumer sentiment. These reports will provide a comprehensive view of the labor market, wage growth, and consumer sentiment. So buckle up for a week, filled with crucial economic data that could significantly influence the financial markets. Stay tuned, stay informed, and thank you for watching. If you found value in this video, please consider liking and subscribing for more updates. Bye for now.